you have done the world a great service by writing a series of books, The Case for Christianity, and uh, your latest book, The Case for Miracles, and then this beautiful book, a very simple, easy book on The Case for Easter. You were an atheist. Right. And your wife became a believer. Right. And you said, I'm gonna prove that that's just a bunch of nonsense. I thought I could rescue her from this cult if I could just disprove <laughs> the resurrection. You so know? you went out to prove that there wasn't any basis well, for Well, you know, I've been a journalist at the Chicago Tribune for a number of years, and I've seen a lot of dead bodies, but no, none of them came back to life. <laughs> so I thought, I thought okay, yeah. give me a weekend, I can disprove the resurrection. Well, as I say, almost two years later, what I learned is that uh, four facts that really blew me away. Number one, the execution of Jesus, that he was mm. dead. Even the peer-reviewed scientific journal of the American Medical Association uh, carried a, an authoritative article that concluded by saying uh, clearly, based on the historical and medical evidence, Jesus was dead even before the wound to his side was inflicted. Mm. So um, even the atheist historian, Gerd Ludemann, says it's historically indisputable that Jesus was dead. Wow. Secondly, I found out that we have a report to the resurrection, including named eyewitnesses and groups of eyewitnesses, that has been dated back by scholars to within months of the mm. death of Jesus, within months. Then third, the empty tomb. Well, I found out even the opponents of Jesus admitted the tomb was empty. They conceded it was empty. They just tried to explain how it got empty by saying the disciples stole the body. And then eyewitnesses. Most of what we know from ancient history, we know from one or two sources. And yet for the conviction of the disciples that they encountered the resurrected Jesus, we have no fewer than nine ancient sources inside and outside the New Testament confirming and corroborating the conviction of the disciples that they met the risen Christ. That is a avalanche of historical data. In the case for Easter, what do you feel like is the most important lesson for those who, mm. who are approaching Easter yeah. and are, are looking to it and saying, is this just another Christian observance? Because I mean, churches will be packed yeah. on Easter Sunday like never before, even right. more than uh, during Christmas. So what's the hope, the message that you're trying to make sure we don't miss? I think a couple of things. Number one, uh, without the resurrection of Jesus, there is no Christianity. And mm -hmm. frankly, there's no hope for us as humankind. But the other thing on a very practical level is this. If God can take the worst thing that could ever happen in the history of the universe, which is the death of the Son of God on a cross, hmm. and turn it into the best thing that's ever happened in the universe, which is the opening of heaven to all who follow him, then why can't he take our problems and our trials and tribulations and draw good out of those as he promises to do in scripture? When we're talking about what you've done with your career, which has been remarkable, and you've had such an influence. Mm. Have there been people that have come up to you and just wanted to get in an argument and debate oh, yeah. you? Oh, sure. What is the typical means by which they approach you and, and how do they try to disprove what you've said? Yeah, you know, they'll raise something they saw on the internet. Yeah. Like they'll say, oh, you know, the reason the tomb was empty is because the body was never in the tomb. Didn't you know that <laughs> they, they threw the bodies of crucifixion victims to the dogs? And, and, you know, so they read that in the internet. And then you say, well, wait, you know, that's interesting. Uh -huh. And sometimes that happened. However, we have found the buried remains of crucifixion victims who still had the spike through their heel and a piece of the olive wood from the cross attached. So we know that some crucifixions were vic uh, victims were buried. We know from the earliest account that goes right back within months of the death of Jesus that he was buried. Um, and um, uh, so... You know, I think the evidence is on my side, not on your side. And when I say something like that, if they just pop up with another question or another objection, then you know they're not really pursuing huh. truth. But if they say, okay, well, that's interesting. What else can we talk about? Huh. Uh, maybe there's answers to some of the other things I've seen on the internet. This is a, a perfect weekend for this book, The Case for Easter and its study guide. They're available at amazon.com, other top booksellers. And you can also learn a lot more about Lee Strobel and all of his books and speaking engagements at leestrobel.com. Follow him on Twitter, at Lee Strobel.